Are the parts more than the sum? Or is this an effective little thriller? Let's take a look. Okay, everybody, years before Jim Cameron put all his actors through their paces in The Abyss, another director put the actors through their paces in this. We're talking 1977's The Deep. But before we go any further, before we dig into this gem any more, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. From the number one bestseller by the author of Jaws, this is The Deep. It begins in Bermuda with the adventure and romance of an island vacation, a fantastic opportunity for two young lovers to get away from it all. Was it beginner's luck to discover a sunken wreck in less than 60 feet of water? Where'd you get this exactly? Was it coincidence that there were two treasures, one of priceless jewels, the other more valuable than that? You must be the young couple who found that bottle this afternoon. Uh, it certainly didn't look like anything. Were well, you finding like anybody? Excitement of treasure worth killing for. <laughs> the adventure and intrigue of a secret worth dying for. Oh, right. If his tongue moves again, cut it. Go upstairs, pack, and go home. I'm going down there. And you're gonna have to blow me up too. As you please, boy. And beneath it all is the terror of the deep. Alright everybody, this motion picture was directed by Peter Yates. Did some stuff I already reviewed? We're going to get there. We're talking about he has done stuff like Breaking Away, which I'm going to review, and I love that movie. It is just awesome. And he did Crawl, and Mother Jugs and Speed, and Bullet, and Year of the Comet, and For Pete's Sake, and Murphy's War, and The Dresser, and Eyewitness. So, you've seen his work, you know his work, you got to know what you're going to get. What more can I say? Let's keep going. Play David! Nick Nolte. Let's do this. We're talking about he has been in 48 Hours, number one and number two. And Cape Fear, and Weeds, and North Dallas 40, and Cannery Row, and The Prince of Tides, and Teachers, which is Forgotten Jim, and Mulholland Falls, and The, and the Player, and Down Out in Beverly Hills, and Lorenzo's Oil, and The Thin Red Line. So we're talking about he has been in a bunch of Tropic Thunder, for God's sakes. How could I almost forget that? Oh, he's been in a bunch of stuff, folks. What more can I say? Playing Gale. <sighs> oh, Jacqueline Bissett. Let's go. We're talking about she has been in stuff like Bullet 
and airport and class and casino royale and the greek tycoon and under the volcano and murder on the orient express and wild orchid and saint eyes and the spiral staircase so we all remember her she dropped that gorgeous oh my god is what it is let's keep going bang romer oh my god oh my god robert shaw Let's go. We're talking about he was in Force 10 from Navarone, which I just reviewed not that long ago, and Swashbuckler, and The Sting, and A Man for All Seasons, and Battle of the Bulge, and From Russia with Love, and Black Sunday, my God, and, and Robin and Miriam, and The Taking of Pelham, one, two, three, and The Battle of Britain, and of course, of course he played Quint in the one and only Jaws. That might come up again. Playing Adam! Come on, you can't think of a cowboy movie without thinking of Eli Wallach. Let's go. We're talking about he has been in stuff like How the West Was Won, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and The Magnificent Seven, and Cinderella Liberty, and The Sentinel, which I reviewed, and uh, Circle of Iron, which I reviewed, and The Hunter, and Tough Guys, and The Two Jakes, and uh, he even popped up in The Godfather 3. So we're talking big career, long career, was in a bunch of shit, is what it was. And playing Z and me, Lewis Gossett Jr. <sighs> this guy's good. Anyway, let's get going. We're talking about, obviously, he was in an officer and a gentleman. And he was in Enemy Mine and Firewalker and Iron Eagle, not one, but two, and all three, and Roots and Jaws 3, that movie we love because it was such shit, and The Principal and The Punisher and Cover Up and Toy Soldiers and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of TV work. So... Come on, man. You all know Louis Gossett Jr. Don't bullshit me. And there was all kinds of people in this motion picture you got to keep your eye out for. People have been in other flicks, have popped up in some stuff, and they're here. We're talking about people like Dick Anthony Williams, who is in Dog Day Afternoon, and The Mac, and The Jerk, and the, and the Star Chamber, and Earl Maynard. Come on, man. He was that bodybuilder dude. He was in, like, Circle of Iron, and The Big Bra, and Black Belt Jones. And Robert, Tessie, are you shitting me? Come on. Hard Times and Steel and fucking Star Crash and The Longest Yard. Come on. And Bob Miner, he was a stuntman, an actor, and he was a, like Commando. And uh, Force Vengeance and Hard Times and Action. Jackson. Come on, man. Just keep your eyes out. There's people all over this motion picture. <sighs> Let's get rolling. All right, everybody, we're going to do this in 90 seconds or less. Keep it fast, keep it quick, keep it moving, keep it entertaining so we can get to it all. Much rather be the summation. you got this young couple. They are on vacation, and they are deep sea diving on some wrecks. Well, they were on some wrecks that were okay to go on, but then they went on a wreck that they shouldn't have went on. And when they were in there, they found a little bit of treasure and these strange little bottles filled with some kind of fluid. Hey, who knows? Anyway, they go back to turning their gear, and even the guy, the scuba dude, says, Hey, where'd you get this bottle? And they're like, uh, give me that back. And they go about their night. They go out to dinner. While they're at dinner, another guy comes up to him and says, Hey, I heard you found a little bottle. I'm into rare glass. How about I buy it from you? They play it off to this guy like they don't know what he's talking about. He knows they're full of shit. Let the story continue. Anyway, they go out and they look up this famous treasure hunter authority. This guy who is a guy who knows everything about the shipping lanes and everything that goes on in the area. We are talking about Robert. Shaw. And they say to him, hey, we found this, we found that, what's this, what's that? And he even sees that little uh, bottle of something, and he kind of snatches it, takes it, because he has to be sure of what it really is. Well, long story short, the original guy from dinner kidnaps these two people and says, I want that stuff, I want that bottle, and you better give it to me. Plain and simple. You see, what turns out is that He's a major drug dealer. And those little bottles are filled with morphine, which apparently is easy to turn into street drugs. <sighs> they want to get out of there, but they want to go down and see if they can get the treasure. So they enlist, of course, Robert Shaw. And the three of them are trying to go down there and see if they can identify this treasure and make millions of dollars while keeping the drug dealers off of their back by promising to do some retrievals for them. But are they really going to do it? Or are they just saying they're going to do it? Because these people ain't into that whole kind of shit. It is what it was. You get the idea. Young couple hook up with a treasure hunter and a historian. And they're going to go down and look for treasure while keeping drug dealers off their back. Bam! There you go. Okay, everybody. Does the deep work? Yes. 
the deep works. As long as you remember what it is and what it's not. And we'll get to that in a minute. But let's get the regular stuff out of the way. Are we talking directing? Hey man, the movie looks friggin' beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is simply that. The directing is fine. Let's move on. The writing, again, they nail it. Good writing, nothing stupid. Characters stay who they're supposed to stay, do what they're supposed to do. Let's move on. And the acting. Ah, oh, that's where this motion picture shines, people. The acting, it is what it is. Let me break into it for a moment. You have Louis Gossett Jr., who is amazing as Henry. He's elegant. He's dangerous. He's scary. He is spot on as the main baddie. Plain and simple, you can't avoid it. Then you got Robert Shaw, who's basically kind of playing Quint 2.0, and he knocks it out the park. I mean, he's basically playing Quint, maybe a slightly altered version of him, but it's the same kind of guy. Eli Wallach, all the supporting characters, everybody does their job and nails it out the park. We're talking about the cast is right on point. And of course you got Jacqueline Bissett in this, my God. And her job in this was so memorable, it almost stole some things from the motion picture. Let me explain. Do you remember back in the day, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, classic movie. We all love it, but bring up that shit to everybody today. What do they remember? Phoebe Cates coming out the pool. It's just the way it is. Phoebe Cates coming out the pool. It's what everybody remembers the first thing about Fast Time at Ridgemont High. Ridgemont High. Forget that it was a great flick. Forget that it was memorable and we all loved it. It's Phoebe Cates in the pool. There's a little bit of that going on in the deep. You gotta remember, the first 15 minutes of this motion picture, or maybe 10, Jacqueline Bissett is just diving in a white t-shirt with nothing underneath it. Let me say that again for everybody in the back row who didn't quite hear me. Jacqueline Bissett is diving in a white t-shirt for 10 minutes with nothing underneath it. That's one of those things that almost overshadowed the movie and her performance. It was literally when you would sit there and talk about The Deep, people would remember that. Hell, me and my friends back in the HBO days would go in, catch the first 20 minutes of it, run back out the door and start hanging out together. It was one of those things. So her acting job and some other attributes almost became the most memorable thing in this motion picture. Now let's get back to why this motion picture rocks. It's an effective, taut, well-directed, well-acted little thriller. It's one of those motion pictures that has that 70s vibe, much like a Nighthawks or even a James Bond movie if you pull half the crazy shit out of it. It's deliberately paced, it moves along, tells an effective story, keeps you on the edge of your seat, and it delivers. Also, the underwater work in this motion picture is just incredible. Again, way before The Abyss, what the actors were doing in those scuba tanks was just great. And the idea that they created those moments of suspense and claustrophobia and all that kind of stuff in the 70s, as well as they did it without the special effects and all that bullshit making you think people are underwater, was just phenomenal. I'm telling you, some of the best underwater work you'll ever see in a motion picture happened in this flick, bar none. Now let's talk about one of the things that was kind of bad marketing or whatever on their parts. I mean, the movie made money, so I guess it was marketed okay. But you have to remember what I said before. You'll like this movie. You'll really like this movie if you remember it is what it's not. And by that I mean when they made this motion picture, the first thing that comes to anybody's mind, Peter Benchley, Robert Shaw, Water, we're getting another Jaws movie. And Jesus Christ, just look at the marketing for it, for God's sakes. The posters basically mirrored each other. It was kind of ridiculous. But this motion picture isn't really about a monster underneath the water. Honestly, I think the motion picture would have been better if they cut the scenes with the giant eel out. It didn't need to be there. It was kind of stupid. I don't know why they had it in the motion picture. Yes, yeah, Peter Benchley and he likes to do shit with the water. It is what it is. But if you took that eel and wrote it out of the movie, you wouldn't have even noticed it was there. You wouldn't have noticed it was cut out. Yeah, somebody gets munched by it at the end. Whatever, we all know. But they could have ended that some other way. Two seconds with a pencil could have fixed the problem. There was no need for the eel to be in this motion picture. And there was no need for them to market this motion picture as a 
terror from the deep type of thing, it kind of misled you. It would be like if you went and seen Jaws, and it was a family drama, and maybe during two scenes, somebody said, hey, look at that, there's, there's a fin in the water. That, and that was it. You felt like you were getting something that you weren't promised. You know what I mean? And maybe that bothers some people and kind of hurt it in the memory of the world to a degree. But it shouldn't because the rest of the motion picture was solid. It was a good action, good suspense, great underwater work, and amazing acting. How could you not love a motion picture that gives you all of that? Was there any negatives? Well, I just covered one. The ridiculous eel which was just stupid and didn't need to be there. And the fight scene between Quinn 2.0's guy and Henry D's guy, these two muscle-bound dudes just beating the shit out of each other, was kind of fucking lame. Yes, there were parts that were okay, you know, the, the, the motorboat and the blades of the guy's face. Yeah, it builds some tension. But the end of it? When have you ever seen a fight scene end like that in a motion picture? It was weird. There was no need for it. I don't know why they did it that way. I guess to leave you in suspense for a minute, who won? But it was so improbable. I mean, let's get together and fight back to back. What the fuck? It, it, it was one of those things that it just, it didn't need to be there. But all in all, you can forgive that. We'll even overlook the eel. And we'll sit there and focus on the good, which is probably about 92, 93% of this motion picture, and take it for what it is. Good movie time. Good acting time, good directing time, and a good time for all of us. Okay, everybody, once and again, and as always, be good, take care, stay out of trouble, help a friend, be kind to a stranger, but above all else, no matter what, under no circumstances, at any time, take any bullshit from anybody. See you soon.